Hey guys, so why is it important to use the right edition? And why do we have different editions? It's important to use the right edition. So here's what we find. I want you to look at this. This is, we're going to use this as an example. second movement to Beethoven's Pathetique Sonata, and this is an old book, this is going to fall apart, this is called International Library of Music, and it comes from, a, I think, nine volumes or something like that, so this is like, kind of like anything here, let me move this, and this, this is a very cheap, very cheap, can see the price tag there. Urtext edition, which is not bad at all. It's not the best, okay, but it's really not bad. Henley's probably better than this. So rule of thumb, go with the one that has the least things written, because if the composer wrote them, they're gonna be in there. If he didn't, they're just ideas that 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 are sometimes useful, but often they're going to screw around with you. So I'd like you to see the difference of these two editions. So look carefully at that one. See there's pedal markings. Let's move this light here. Pedal markings, uh, dynamics, crescendo, diminuendo. What do we have in this one? We ain't got zilch. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing. So why is that important? This is really important because, okay, let's look at this part. What do we have here? Can you see this part? Hold on. Where is it? Right here. This part here. Now, you see that? We have little triplets there. There's staccatos and accents. And there's another accent here. Okay, and a piano. Now, in this one, we have... Pianissimo. No, no staccatos and no accents. So while they might not be bad ideas, it's better to use your gut and instincts to figure things out. Because sometimes you have, this is what we call intuition or an, an instinct. You just look at a score, especially when there's not too much on it that, that wasn't written by the composer himself, and you have an idea of how to play it. And if you have especially with Beethoven, because Beethoven is very, very, very specific about where he wants you to crescendo and not, and dynamics and things like that, as well as articulations. He is extremely specific about it and was known to be even a, a hard ass about those, those sort of things. So let's just look at an example here. This phrase here. Uh, this is on the third line, okay, right here. We have this piano and a crescendo, diminuendo, okay? I want you to notice that. And then it says crescendo, and then we have these things which are or ornamentated in this edition, which might be helpful because that's probably the best way to play them, but again, you may have another idea of how to do it. Okay, so we have this piano and this crescendo diminuendo. We call this a hairpin, and then crescendo here. Now, in the other edition, we have nothing, okay? There's just absolutely nothing, and then we have a crescendo way out here. So, if you're playing from the edition with all the things written in it, the bad one, you're going to have... Unless you're deliberately not doing what's written, which ain't a good idea because Beethoven is very specific, and now you don't know what's right or not. This crescendo here, and then back here, and now there's a crescendo rhythm. Okay, with an accent here, which is not written either. Now, this forces you to go like this and do a crescendo here and then a diminuendo. But maybe if you're reading from this one with nothing, none of this garbage in it, 
your instinct may have been to do something like this. Now I'm doing a crescendo that's not even written, which may not even be a good idea, but I wouldn't have really thought to do that if I'm looking at this edition with these crescendos and things in it. So the difference is here, instead of doing a crescendo here, and then a diminuendo here, I'm doing pretty much the opposite. Going in one, one single direction with this thing. So that is why this is very, very important. For Bach, go with Henley. Henley is great because it doesn't have all those articulations in it which you do not need. You should do the articulations, but you should come up with them yourself. Uh, because the ones that are written in Shermer edition, for example, they're not always good. Chopin, I personally like to use the Paderewski edition. Uh, Shermer's it can be not so bad for Chopin, especially the Mikuli, the one edited by Mikuli, because it, uh, he has a close relationship to Chopin. So this is very good for Chopin. Uh, there's also the Ekier, Polish one, which is rather expensive, a little, uh, a little fancy, but it's not bad. Uh, and, and it has all, all these suggestions and, and things in it. So uh, just a little anecdote on Chopin. When I started learning the second piano sonata, I was using, I think, uh, it, it was a photocopy from somewhere, and I think it was from a Peter's edition. I knew it was no good, and I was waiting to go uh, get my hands on a better one. <clears throat> but everything that was written in there was so upside down but I just took it for granted as how, how it should be played. So things like lines, uh, phrasing, crescendo, and things like that. And I was so confused about how, how this worked. And I remember playing it for my teacher and he just like scratched out a bunch of things and like, this is the opposite, you know, and this is like this. And I was like, well, that seems so much more normal. Like I might have figured that out if there was just nothing written in the score. And sure enough, after, uh, uh, switching to Paderewski, uh, all those things that uh, that we had scratched out and changed, that's how they were in the Paderewski, not in Peters. So Peters might be good for other things, but it ain't good for Chopin, and Henley is not so great for Chopin either. It's better for Bach and Beethoven. Last one is Haydn, because Haydn, uh, we have often the same situation that we have with Beethoven. All kinds of things written in there, which really and truly, uh, they just screw, uh, this is from my personal experience, completely screw you over because you have um, this like inspired way of, of playing something and there's all these things which aren't there. So, you know, again, this made sense to me by playing it a certain way in a good edition and then switching to a horrible one and it was like, wait, there's all these things here which are telling me not to do what I'm doing, and Haydn didn't write them. So, Universal Edition for Haydn is probably the best. A little, little more expensive than something like Shermer's, but don't buy Shermer's, you're wasting your money anyway for Haydn. Use it for something like uh, maybe Chopin Mikuli, or even at that, or something that's not, not so uh, important, like maybe Mendelssohn. Uh, Baron Reiter might also have Haydn sonatas. Uh, for Bach, Baron Reiter is also very good. So get the right edition. Very important. Um, don't waste your time with with all this junk. That's sometimes a good good suggestions, but somewhere like here, you know, it's not. He didn't write it, and you want to know what the composer wrote, especially for Beethoven.